And we're turning this morning to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, please. The Gospel of Matthew, and we're in chapter 6 this morning. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, and commencing to read it down at verse 19, please. Matthew 6, and verse 19. The Lord Jesus Himself is speaking. And the Lord Jesus said in John, sorry, Matthew 6 and verse 19, Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he would hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or with all what shall be, uh, with all where shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing, as He always does, to His own precious truth. When, child of God, we seek and strive for perfection, when, child of God, we seek and strive to be in that position where God wants us to be, not where we want to be, but to strive for that position this morning where God wants to be, or if we're striving this morning to really be in the race for God, if we're striving this morning to achieve those goals, it must all begin at the starting blocks that says, first things first. And child of God this morning, if indeed we are striving to be the person God wants us to be, or if we're striving to be in the place where God wants to be, it all begins this morning, child of God. It all begins at the same place. It begins at the place where it says, first things first. 
I don't know about you, child of God, but how is it? How is it when we strive to be the person that God wants us to be? How is it, child of God, when we strive to be in the place where God wants to be? At times, child of God, it seems that we're going nowhere. It seems, child of God, that we're running round in circles. It just seems, child of God, that we fail, and we fail miserably to reach that desired achievement, to be in the race for God. Why is it, child of God, we fail so miserably? Why is it, child of God, we seem to be running around in circles? Why does it seem, child of God, we don't seem to be going anywhere? It's all because we do not put first things first. I wonder if, if God is speaking to someone this morning and you have been desiring and striving to be the person God wants you to be. You're striving to be in the place where God wants you to be, and it all seems to be going nowhere, child of God. Well, perhaps it's because you're not putting first things first. Another area, child of God, we often struggle with this morning, and we fail to reach this place, and that's to be in the place where we are cleared of cares. Wouldn't it be lovely, child of God, to be in that place, to be in that position where we are cleared from cares? How many of us this morning, child of God, are often wearied down with worries. Now, let's all be honest this morning because we all can, preacher included. We can always find ourselves weighed down with burdens. Maybe there's someone here this morning, and that's exactly where you find yourself. The fear of the unknown 2014 lurks upon your mind, and you're greatly anxious. Listen, I'm not going to condemn you because we all have them. How is it, child of God, that worries? How is it that cares? How is it that all these things seem to be lurking at every hand? We worry about our children, don't we? Some of us can have sleepless nights over our children. Some of us can worry about our employment. And sometimes we can have sleepless nights over our employment. Worries and cares come from a thousand and one different reasons. I was speaking to a lady in Anna Long just the other day, and this is what she said to me. George, I always, and she's a Christian lady. She says, I always find myself worrying. I'm worrying about this, and I'm worrying about that, and I'm worrying about the other thing. And when I'm not worrying, I start to worry because I'm not worrying. But why? In fact, the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, addresses that very problem. The Lord Jesus Christ this morning lets us see it's all because we don't put first things first. Matthew 6 and verse 25, this is what the Lord Jesus said. Three times He said it in our passage this morning. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought. Don't be worrying. Don't be laden down with cares. Look at verse 25 for a moment. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Verse 30, it says, Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you of ye of little faith? You know, the Lord Jesus is saying, when we're worrying, we're not trusting God. When we worry, we are not trusting God. Isaiah 26 and verse 3 has a lovely little verse, and this is what it says. He will keep 
Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stead on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Listen, child of God, the question I want to ask you this morning is this. Can we possess perfect peace when everything seems to crumble all around us? Is it possible, child of God, to possess this perfect peace when everything in life goes wrong? Is it, child of God, possible this morning to have this perfect peace within our hearts when our world crumbles around us? How are we able to achieve this? How are we able this morning to reach this goal? It's learning this lesson this morning. It's learning to put first things first. The Lord Jesus speaks of our text this morning, and it's from this text God wants to speak to us. The Lord Jesus said in Matthew 6 and verse 33, But seek ye first, first, the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. There are three things very briefly that the Lord Jesus speaks to us of in that text. First of all, there's the daily priority that we must choose. I know, child of God, this is the first Lord's day in a new year. What a better place, what a better time to start putting first things first on the first Lord's Day of a new year. You know, child of God, here is the daily priority that we must choose. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Listen, this is not a New Year's resolution, by the way. This is not a yearly priority. This is not a monthly priority. This is not a weekly priority. Listen, child of God, it's a daily priority, a daily priority to seek first the kingdom of God. Child of God, that means this morning that we must seek after all that God desires and all that God demands. Do you seek God first? Are you putting God first? God first in your life? Is He in mine? The Lord Jesus in this text says this morning, we must put first things first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Can I ask you a personal question as I have had to ask myself this personal question? Is your heart, child of God, every Christian in this room, is your heart His royal throne? Every Christian in the middle row, is your heart His royal throne? Every Christian on this row, is your heart His royal throne? Every one of us, child of God, are called to seek first the kingdom of God. This this morning, this this morning is not an attitude that we must think. It is not an attitude that we must think. No, it's an action that we must take. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Do you seek first the kingdom of God, child of God? Is that the daily priority in your life? From the very moment we waken in the morning, is that the first thought comes into your head? Is that the first priority that we put in place that we're to seek first, not second or third, first, the kingdom of God? Tell me this, child of God, do you seek first the kingdom of God as far as our giving is concerned? Do we seek first the kingdom of God as far as our giving is concerned? Do you ever wonder why God holds so much back? God holds so much back from us 
because we hold so much back from God. God holds so much back from us. Yes, He gives us bountiful blessings, but yet there's more. And God holds so much more back because we hold so much back from God. Listen, I want to say something this morning, child of God. God is no man's debtor. God is no man's debtor. God is not a robber. Man is. Man is. God doesn't rob men. Men rob God. Men rob God. Malachi 3 and verse 8, what do we read? Will a man rob God? Yes, he'll rob God. He'll rob God in tithes. He'll rob God in offerings. He'll rob God in a million ways. You rob God. Do I rob God? You know, child of God, this morning, listen. Everything that God gives us, everything that we have comes from God anyway. Do you know something this morning? There's missionaries having to come home because they cannot be supported. You know, child of God, are you seeking first the kingdom of God as far as your giving is concerned, as far as my giving is concerned? Is it because there are missionaries has to come home because we fail to keep it with God? One thing about this fellowship I have learned over the 15 months that I've been here, this fellowship is blessed with a people who have a heart for giving. I was speaking to a, a treasure of another church shortly before Christmas. And the people starve the work and starve the missionaries because they fail to give anything. Malachi in verse 3, verse 10, the Lord says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I'll tell you something. God wants to pr us to prove Him. How? By proving Him through our giving. I love the story in John's Gospel 6 and 9. Do you remember the wee lad appears one day with the five loaves and the two fish? Do you remember the 5,000 people gathered there that were starving? And the wee fella comes, all he has is five loaves and two fish. And he hands it all into the Lord Jesus' hands. He didn't hold back one loaf and a fish for himself. He gave all that he had into the Lord's hands. And because he gave it into the Lord's hand, friend, what little he had, the Lord multiplied it. Do you know why, child of God, we miss so much? Because we fail to put it into God's hands. The wee lad that evening, why, what it must have been like for him. The five loaves and the two fish and little, it says two little fish, and 5,000 people are fed, and he heads home that night. Uh, uh, well, I'm not saying he had a wheelbarrow, but, but imagine it. He heads home that night with a wheelbarrow with 12 baskets filled. And the mother says to him, son, what's that you're bringing back? He says, that's my leftovers from my lunch, mama. But that's what happens, child of God, when we seek first the kingdom of God and we place in God's hands what we have to give. You remember in 1 Kings 17, the widow of Zarephath, you remember all she had was a handful of meal in the barrel and a little oil in the cruise, but she gave it to the servant of God and God never failed it. You know something, child of God, do you put the kingdom of God first as far as your giving is concerned? In Tennessee, a little boy of nine years of age got saved, and the Baptist pastor 
preached on that text, Can a man rob God? That Sunday morning, sitting in the pew, the wee lad of nine years of age was standing there when the offering plate was passed round, and he put his hands in his pocket, and he says, I have nothing to give God. I have nothing to give Him. He thought about it. And as the offering plate was coming back down, he stopped this wee lad. This is a true story. He stopped the, the deacon, whoever it was, coming down the aisle. And he took the plate of the deacon, he set it on the carpet, and the wee lad of nine years of age stood on the plate and says, Lord, I have nothing to give, only myself. Nine years of age, but the wee lad was seeking to put first the kingdom of God because that wee lad became our great witness among the streets for many years in New Orleans. And through that young lad's witness, many came to know the Lord. You see, it's a daily priority that we must choose. In our giving, it's a daily priority that we must choose in our living. Luke 9, verse 23, the Lord Jesus says, If anyone will come after me, let him deny himself. Child of God, if we seek to follow Christ, and if we want to learn to follow Christ, do you know the first lesson we have to learn to follow is the lesson to forsake? If we follow Him, we must learn to forsake. Friend, the first thing if we want to live for Him is to learn how to die, learning how to die to ourselves. You know something, child of God? They who put first and seek first the kingdom of God in their giving and who seek first the kingdom of God in their living are a people this morning where God where God leaves His footprint in their lives. Charles Finney, the great revivalist preacher of a bygone day, was such a man who sought daily the kingdom of God in his living and in his old being. When Charles Finney one day walked into a factory floor, so great and so awesome was his presence Many felt the very presence of God through Charles Finney. And because Finney entered that factory, many felt the very presence of God, and many bowed the knee under conviction and trusted Christ. Oh, that George McConnell could be like that. But you know, child of God, the daily priority is not just seeking the kingdom of God, seeking first the kingdom of God in our giving. And it's not just in our living, but it's in our serving. It's in our witnessing. It's in our reading. It's in our praying. Let's get it all together. We must seek first the kingdom of God in everything. In everything. It's the daily priority we must choose. But secondly, in that text, there's the divine pattern that we must crave. I use the word crave not to match my headings because it's crave is what actually means. The Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 said this, Blessed is the man who hungers and who thirsts after righteousness, for there shall be filled. It's the divine pattern that we must crave. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Hungering for His righteousness, child of God, ought to be the craving of every Christian. As a dying man who dies with hunger craves for food, so the child of God needs to crave for his righteousness. 
As a dying man dies of thirst, as he craves for water, so the child of God this morning must crave for his righteousness. This, this morning, ought to be the craving. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Do you know what the Lord Jesus Christ is not saying? The Lord Jesus is not saying this morning, crave after our righteous life. No, no, because there's no righteousness in us, child of God. For in me, that is my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Know what the Lord Jesus wants you and I, and what He's calling us to crave for this morning, to crave after, is His righteousness. Is that what you crave for this morning, child of God? Listen, you will never be spiritually filled if you crave for materialistic things. You know so many of God's people today, and they're tied up, and they're wired up, and they're tangled up through craving for material things. When we crave for material things, child of God, that leaves us bankrupt, because craving for material things only leads to frustration. Nothing satisfies the heart and soul. But when we crave and we crave and seek first the kingdom of God, and when we crave after His righteousness, we'll never be frustrated when we'll be filled. Just to be like Jesus. Just to be like Him is the craving within my heart just to be like Him. Oh, child of God, if you haven't got the craving heart, seek this morning, child of God, that cultivate that craving within your heart. A craving that craves for His righteousness. I and His righteousness alone. David Brainerd was an American colonial missionary to the Indians who sadly died at the age of 29. His diaries reveal that he was a young man intensely committed to God. David Brainerd spoke one day to the great preacher Jonathan Edwards, and this is what he said. I do not want to go to heaven to be advanced. I want to go to heaven to give honor to God. It is no matter where I shall be stationed in heaven, whether I have a high seat or whether I have a low seat, my heaven will be to please God. My heaven will be to glorify Him. My heaven will be to be filled with His righteousness and to give all to Him and to be totally devoted to His glory. David Brainerd, Charles Finney, and many, many other men were men whose ministry were blessed because they made our text this morning their daily priority, and they made it their divine pattern. These were men that put 
first things first. On this opening Lord's Day of another year, God's message to all of our hearts, mine included, let us put first things first this morning. Let us strive to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. That's the daily priority that we must choose. That's the divine pattern that we must crave. But then it finishes with the definite promise that we must claim. Listen to what it says, and this with this I finish. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Here's the, divine, the definite promise that we must claim. And all these things shall be added unto you. Listen, God is not a man that He should lie. God is not a man that He should lie. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, child of God, and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Not your greed, but our needs. This mere promise this morning is not a mere promise. It's a promise this morning that demands the full weight of our faith to stand upon. This is no mere promise. We quote it. We can rattle it off. But when you stop and think about it this morning, child of God, this is no mere promise. This is a promise that we must prove. It's a promise that demands the full weight of our faith to stand on. I'll tell you the reason being this morning. If we fail to claim this promise, here in Matthew 6, 33, if we fail to claim this promise, then we'll never seek first the kingdom of God. If we fail to claim this promise, then we'll never crave after His righteousness. Child of God, listen to me. Bertie Johnson always stressed this to me time and time and time after again. He says, George, listen to me. There's one thing the Lord enjoys. There's one thing the Lord delights in. There's nothing more pleases the Lord when His people simply trust Him. God loves to be trusted. Can you trust God this morning? Can you say this morning, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Can you say it? Will you do it? And can you trust God this morning and depend upon God to meet you at your every need to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness?